Hi, this is Ken. Welcome back again. Uh, I wanted to start off in the dark a little bit so that you can get a look at uh, what it is I'm working on. This is the finished concept. And uh, if for some reason it doesn't appeal to you, then you know, go ahead and move on. Don't watch the video. I don't want to waste anybody's time. But it's a, uh, it's a sort of a different way of looking at edge lighting. Uh, in this case, uh, I worked uh, a bit differently than I would normally. Uh, typically, we'd use a Dremel tool and go through all that etching and so forth. Um, this is an awful lot easier. And uh, basically, this is a transparency made in an inkjet printer. And rather than scratching out the design on the on the acrylic. This is a 3 16th piece of acrylic uh, with an LED strip light under here which I'll explain in a minute. Uh, but the image then would be interchangeable. If you wanted to do one of your home uh, whatever you want to do. Uh, in case of uh, if you want to use stencils uh, or transparent inks. Uh, this would work as well. So there are a number of possibilities that I wanted to uh, kind of go over. But the one that I, I like the most is uh, the idea of using transparencies that are interchangeable and you know they're, they're, they're kind of interesting and nice. So let me turn on some lights and go over a little bit about what these are. Uh, everybody's familiar with the fact that you can use acrylics, uh, generally speaking, to uh, etch. And many times they use Dremel tools. In fact, uh, I've even used uh, something that's fairly common And that is one of these uh, nail polish, uh, nail care uh, devices. It's not a Dremel tool, but they have some interesting uh, stones and points in them for caring for fingernails. And they, they will make an etching uh, somewhat usable. But I, I, I totally went the different way. And so what I found is that the best sandpaper to use, uh, and the more time you spend on this, the better off it's going to be, is a, a garnet paper, which is a uh, 220 grit garnet. And uh, most most of these are fairly, fairly typical and easy to get in almost all hardware stores. And, but there is a technique involved so I use this. I made it. I just make a sanding block out of an old, an old one that I had, and uh, makes it a little bit easier. And then I just I take a piece of. I've done this already. I'm sure you don't want to stay here and <laughs> watch me do this. But what I found out is not to go directionally this way or that way, but to go in a circular direction and you get considerably more uniform when you do that. That's at least what I found so far. And then uh, of course when you compare the two, this is just masking tape to protect that one side. Uh, you can see that I'll do this, do this real quickly. This illuminates fairly well and that just passes edge to edge which is fairly common. So that's that's how easy it is. It just takes a little bit of time. So that's that's basically the concept um, and you could use, I suspect you could use stamp pad images or 
whatever. Now let me just, I'm using a, a 9 volt battery to power this LED strip and it's just on a, a piece of acrylic. You can see that's just just an LED strip and uh, that's what they look like. Now I have one attached to a 9 volt wall wart which is a standard transformer. I'm sure everybody's seen these. Uh, and these come uh, in very long strips 15 meters, 16.4 feet uh, and they come like in this in a reel and they are cuttable in groups of threes and these are in these three LEDs are in series and then the, the whole the whole roll is in parallel but that's, that's not, not something you necessarily need to, to know uh, I hope it, I'll put a link to these but there are a couple of cautions uh, or recommendations that I would make one uh, is that mine are treated with a silicone surface which makes them waterproof which which is great but it makes the connections very very difficult now they have uh, they do sell connectors and it's really quite quite simple this again goes to the wall wart at 9 volts or 12 volts these are rated at 12 volts but 9 volts works really well and these open up and on the LED strip you'll see that there are two little copper pads after you cut them one says plus one says minus so they, they just go in here and then this, this gets closed and that makes your connection so you can cut cut these in various length uh, these connectors are called citrates like uh, zitrades Z-I-T-R-A-D-E-S and if you look on the Amazon page that I, I, I will post with with uh, with these uh, you'll see at the down toward the bottom of the page items bought with this item and so forth you, you've seen that uh, and, and it's Z-I-T-R-A-D-E-S it's like it's like I think they're ten dollars I mean ten ten of them for like six dollars or something so if you want to make a number of these of course you can make frames out of uh, almost anything that you want uh, old picture frames from the dollar store uh, so forth so uh, so I'd recommend that you do get something like this and when you get the LED, LED strips get them without the silicone because these are this silicone is a bear to get off when you want to make these connections these uh, plus and minus connections so I would recommend that you get one that does not have uh, the silicone on it they all have adhesive backs so these are uh, very 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 nice they're easy to use much easier than the old days when we had to use real LEDs big LEDs that were just not a whole lot of fun but uh, so that's the concept pretty straightforward um, and you know I, I have a little bit of a write-up on my on my web page uh, observationsblog.com but just before I, uh, I, I end I, I, I should have added uh, you can certainly go to the web page there are a lot of good projects there as well uh, in addition to you know this one but if you uh, uh, if you're on the website, obviously this is be the same video on YouTube. Uh, there, are, there is a couple. There are a couple of things that I wanted to mention though, real quickly. If you decide to use a wall wart like these standard, you know, standard old wall warts, it has to be regulated. If you get a nine volt one, it must be regulated because if it's not regulated, it might put out considerably more voltage than, than it would had it been not regulated and some of these will run uh, five or six volts over and if uh, 
you run a 12 volt, which is what these are designed to do, it must be regulated. If it goes to 14 or 15 volts, it will burn out the LEDs. So be, be careful of that. That's the one thing I would mention uh, uh, in addition to uh, the project itself. There are also controllers uh, that are designed to work with these, but they're, they're just a little bit too expensive, and I, I, I choose not to use them because uh, you, can, you can just save a, a few dollars. You probably have wall warts hanging around. Just make sure that they're regulated. That's really kind of important. Uh, so, uh, if you opt to, to, to try this and you have any questions, I, I'd appreciate it if you put the questions on the website. Uh, it makes it a little easier for me to respond fairly quickly. So, hey, this is Ken, and I appreciate your taking the time to watch. Thanks an awful lot.